If you're getting ready to close or winterize your pool, you may be asking a few common questions. Should you add antifreeze to your water? What about shock or algicide? And should you drain your pool or leave the water where it is? Well, don't panic because we're gonna cover seven common pool closing and winterization mistakes and how to avoid them. Let's dive in. Real quick, before we continue, if you want more help taking care of your pool, be sure to grab our free pool care cheat sheet at swimuniversity.com slash cheat sheet. It's totally free and will help you keep your pool clean and clear throughout the year. Mistake number one, closing your pool too early. When your pool water temperature drops below 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees Celsius, algae has a harder time growing. So if you wait to close your pool until temperatures stay at 60 degrees or below, you won't be incubating algae underneath your pool cover. The other reason to wait until your temperatures drop, well, any chemical that you add to your water won't last through the winter because they usually last five months and they might be battling algae growth if it's too warm outside. If you wanna close your pool on the earlier side, consider adding algicide to your water before you close up. And if you live in a climate that sees temperatures above 60 degrees in the winter, check your water chemistry every two to three weeks or until the water freezes. On the other hand, don't wait until there's a big freeze to close your pool. While a pool heater can extend your pool season by a month or so, you should plan on closing your pool before temperatures start to fall below freezing at night. Mistake number two, draining your pool. If you have an in-ground or permanent above-ground pool, you do not want to empty the water out of the pool. Exposing your vinyl liner or concrete foundation could lead to serious damage, and the weight of the water in an above-ground pool keeps the ground from shifting or freezing. Instead, the goal of the winter is to clear the water out of your lines, pipes, and equipment while still leaving water in the body of the pool itself. This involves blowing out or winterizing your lines, and if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this, be sure to check out our other pool closing videos. So, do you need to drain out any water when winterizing a pool? For above ground pools, that depends on how you plan on protecting your skimmer during the winter. If you're concerned about freezing and cracking, drain the water level below the skimmer and return lines. Unfortunately, draining the water can cause pressure on your pool cover when it collects rainwater or snow. You'll need to regularly drain the water off your cover with a pump or siphon throughout the winter. The other option is to use a winter skimmer plate. This lets you keep the water level at its normal level, and that's better for your winter cover. Just remove the hose from your skimmer so it can drain properly and install the winter skimmer plate. For in-ground pools, the exact level to drain the water is determined by your pool cover and your pool surface. If you have a vinyl liner, bring the water one inch below your skimmer opening or tile line, whichever is lower. If you have a plaster or non-vinyl pool liner and you're using a solid winter cover, lower the water six inches below the skimmer or the tile line. This water level will help support the solid cover. If you're using a mesh cover, lower the water 18 to 24 inches below the skimmer or tiles. And if you have an automatic pool cover, be sure the water is no lower than the bottom of the skimmer. Be sure to check your water level while the pool is closed throughout the winter, especially if you have snow thaws or rainy weather. Now, if you have a smaller Intex or inflatable pool, you actually do want to completely drain and dismantle the pool. The lightweight material of these pools makes them fast and easy to set up, but it leaves them more vulnerable to ice damage in the winter. And that can completely rupture your pool lining. So manufacturers of smaller pools strongly recommend draining and disassembling your pool if the temperature drops to 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. If you do want to keep your Intex pool up throughout the winter, be sure to check out our video about winterizing your Intex pool. Mistake number three, using antifreeze instead of winterizing your lines. Thinking about adding antifreeze to your pool? If you close your in-ground pool the right way, you shouldn't need to. Antifreeze can definitely help prevent water from freezing, expanding, and bursting your pipes. However, you still have to remove all the water from your pipes by blowing out the lines using an air compressor. While antifreeze is a nice insurance policy, you still have to winterize your pool correctly. If you do want to add some antifreeze, be sure to choose an antifreeze that's rated to 10 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 12 degrees Celsius or even lower if you have colder winter temperatures. And be sure to purchase non-toxic antifreeze specifically designed for pools. Antifreeze should not be needed with above ground pools. Pool antifreeze helps prevent ice damage when you have a small amount of water in the pipes that freezes and expands. 
your biggest risk of ice damage in an above ground pool is actually your pool walls. And that's why using an air pillow is so important. This will protect your pool walls if the water freezes and expands. Finally, if your pool is in Arizona, Florida, or any place that stays relatively warm during the season, you won't need to take any freeze prevention measures. Just be sure to keep your pool pump hooked up and run it daily throughout the winter. Mistake number four, storing your pool gear in the wrong place. Storing your pool gear in a strategic place not only helps protect it from the harsh weather and damage, it makes it easier to find in the springtime. One, store all of your little pool parts like drain plugs, fittings, and O-rings in your pump strainer basket. It's an easy spot to remember, and whoever opens the pool will know where to find it. Two, store any metal equipment indoors. This helps protect it from damage, cracks, and rust. You'll also want to keep any metal away from chlorine, which can cause rusting. Three, consider storing your pump indoors. It's important to keep your pump from accumulating moisture throughout the winter, but disconnecting it and moving your pump increases its chances of getting damaged. If you have a heavy snowfall or live in a harsh winter climate, consider bringing it inside. Otherwise, leave your pump outside and winterize your equipment. Mistake number five, not cleaning your pool before you close. You wouldn't put a coffee cup away if it's dirty, so then why would you do that with your pool? Before you close up for the year, clean your pool by vacuuming, brushing down the walls, and skimming the surface. You should also clean your filter. That means backwashing, cleaning, and draining the water out of your filter. Remember, a little prep now will save you from potentially nasty surprises when you open your pool next spring. Mistake number six, not balancing your water before you close. If your pool water is balanced, it's less likely to cause damage to your pool liner and equipment during the off season. And it's less likely to become a breeding ground for algae. So test and balance your alkalinity, pH, and calcium harness before closing. You'll also wanna shock your pool. You can use a fast dissolving shock before you put the cover on instead of the typical Cal Hypo shock that can take eight to 24 hours to work. If you do use regular shock, make sure you give it enough time to dissolve before you close your pool. The goal is to maintain your free chlorine level between three and five parts per million when your pool is closed. If you experience warmer temperatures in the winter, test your water chemistry every few weeks. And as we mentioned before, consider adding an algicide to your pool just before closing it. If you do, be sure to give the shock a little extra time to dissolve or it will destroy the algicide. Mistake number seven, using bricks or stones to hold down your winter cover. Do not use bricks, stones, or anything else that can damage your liner if they fall into the pool. Use water tubes or water cover weights to keep your cover from sinking into your pool over the winter. They'll also prevent any gaps along the edges of your pool. For an above ground pool, secure your cover with a cable and winch or a combination of winter cover clips and a cable. For an in-ground pool, you may wanna consider a pool safety cover to help keep anything from falling in your water. Remember, taking the time to properly close and winterize your pool now can save you from major pool opening headaches in the spring. Your future self will thank you. And if you need more help maintaining your pool, grab our free pool care cheat sheet at swimuniversity.com slash cheat sheet. And if you found this video helpful, leave a comment, hit the like button, and subscribe for more pool maintenance tutorials. That's it. Thanks again, and happy swimming.